Welcome everybody to another episode of Mortgage Insiders Edition. My name is Kim Nguyen and with me as always is Preet Singh and we are mortgage brokers with Vine Group here. On this week's edition, we're going to be talking about income and how that will pertain to your mortgage application. So I know we've seen a lot of changes, clients moving to a new job. It's a common thing that we do see a lot of people coming into Alberta, uh, they're transitioning to a new job. And all of that is very important because sometimes the way that the lender looks at it may be very different than what you and I may be um, used to. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome everyone to the Marquis Insiders edition. Yes, this topic is becoming a new discussion, I would say, pretty much every day uh, because of the interprovincial migration or new immigrants coming to Alberta. And moreover, also for other clients, also as as uh, we already know, it's it's we are pretty much going into the brand new year. Uh, many different clients have resolutions uh, to find a better job and and uh, maybe improve their lifestyle and everything like that. And at the same time, they're also looking for a home. So we want to address that part and uh, give some uh, maybe feedback what exactly the employers are looking for when you are changing jobs and uh, brand new job, right? So that kind of feedback, like what exactly the lenders are actually looking for, right? So. Yeah, Kim, what, what, what would you say? Like, what's your top, I would say, the biggest thing on your mind that you would like to share with our listeners? Yeah, I think like kind of to take a step back, like the biggest myth that we hear all the time is, okay, if I switch to a brand new job, all I need to do is stay there for three months and that's it, right? And <laughs> And that is what we hear all the time. Three months, probably because usually most probationary period is three months time period. So that's probably why we hear that a lot. But mm -hmm. when it comes to getting your mortgage, you have to be careful because this rule does not apply to everybody, right? Yeah. When, yeah. And like in my experience, and I'm sure Preet, you've probably seen the same thing too. If you are a client um, and you've been established in your career, so for an example, an engineer, I'll use that as an example. If you've mm -hmm. been an engineer for a few years and now you're making a transition to another company, but you are mm -hmm. still an engineer. So meaning you have that long tenure. You've been an engineer for the past 10, 15, 20 years or so, and now you're just moving to a new company. In that situation, that is okay. Even if you're mm -hmm. day one starting with a new company and you're still on probation, because yeah. you have the tenure backing you up and you have the previous year's income to support you, most mm -hmm. lenders are okay with that. But in some cases, pre, it's not, right? Yeah. So definitely in the same example, Kim, what I would like to add on is if your new employer is willing to confirm that you are not on probation at the new job, then we could use the job offer letter and employment letter and a current pay stub and start the application right away. We don't need to wait to wait for you to finish the three months period or, or six month period whatever the case may be, right? But having said that, let's say if you're changing industry and now you were an engineer, uh, but now you're going to a different industry, totally different line of work, totally different industry, then yes, depending upon what you're doing now, there will be a probationary period and lenders would like to see a consistency in income. And what we are discussing today, Kim and I, are discussing a salaried position or an hourly position. What I have seen is some clients changing from a salaried position to a contract position, or they become a consultant, especially a professional field, right? Like engineer, as you said. Um, then they become a uh, like independent consultant, a freelancer, whatever you name it. In bank's terminology or lender's terminology, it is a self-employment. And even if you had those 20 years of experience as an engineer, and but now you're an engineering consultant, the lenders will not use that income until unless you have been in that position for two years, or two calendar years, and there's a proof of income from T1, notice of assessments, T4s, T5s, whatever the case may be, right? So having said that, some clients think that if they're changing a job and they are moving from one position to another position and if they work for three months we just want to break that myth today it's not correct right it's yes three months is a guideline kind of story but it does not fit into every client scenario mm -hmm. 
even yeah. if you're making more income, right? Because I hear this all the time. I have a lot of my clients, uh, you know, it's very notorious in the engineering world, right? I'm an I'm a consultant now, right? I'm earning mm-hmm. more money. Um, I have contracts. I have all of this. But you have to be super, super careful because, again, even though you're making more income, in the lender's eyes, you're self-employed, which means we need that two years of declared income. So if you're yeah. looking to get financing, maybe don't quit your job just as of yet, right? Maybe don't change to a consulting yet until, like I said, you know, you get your financing in order because otherwise you will have to wait the two, like the two year holding period. But like there are some ways around it too, you know, like we could always explore B lenders and such. But mm-hmm. again, if we do go down that B lender route, again, they don't have that two year window, but sure. again, you may be faced with a little bit of a higher rate. So there's always some type of fee or higher rate to pay. So I'm not too sure if that would make sense. I think like, yeah, like another thing too, is just, I have clients that say, okay, well, Kim, what if I change, um, you know, from full time to casual position, how Mm -hmm. does that impact me? Which I do see a lot of too, sometimes, you know, while you want to just drop your standard hours, still with the same employers, but just always remember that when you're going to casual, when you're going to any field that is not guaranteed hours, it's going to be very challenging too, because most of the time lenders will want to see a two-year average in those cases as well too. And your pay stub needs to, you know, make sense. It needs to align with what was earned previously. So something to keep in mind. And I would also like to add on more for our listeners. Let's say this example, you're changing industry and now you're moving from A industry to B industry. And now, yes, three months or six month probationary period is there. Let's say minimum three months example. And you still complete that three month period, but there was, let's say, gap in employment. You were, let's say, last year in 2022 or 2021, you were doing self-employment, but there was a gap. You, you were not able to have the same income level what your new projected income in this current job is showing lenders will still question that and they would like to see the last three year history what exactly were you doing why there was a gap in income why the notice of assessments t4s are showing less income all these questions will come up so be prepared with those answers right and moreover the lenders are very smart google is their biggest friend they google everything they will google your employer's name um, they will Google like to see the street address, where the property, where the um, employer is located. All these questions come up and be prepared with those answers too, right? They, they, uh, I have been asked sometimes, like, who does this employer work for? Like, w- what are the clients? What is, what kind of business they're doing? All these questions tie in to your income indirectly. So. There's lots going on behind the scene other than the first three months standard income. And and other one more thing. Let's say you have completed three month period at the probationer, probationary job and we got your approval. Um, you still have to stay at that position until you take possession. I, I understand some clients have a transitionary job like they're looking for baby steps and moving to a different position working at three months six month period and then looking for another step up in their career right that is fine but once kim and i got your approval do stay in that position for at least your position timeline right and after position whatever you're doing it's it's your business Mm -hmm. Like it's always income is usually one of the biggest things that will make or break an application. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you're in the market, whether it's to refinance your home or maybe you're transferring your mortgages for a better rate because rates are kind of crazy right now or buying a new home, like anything that has to do with financing, always consult with your specialist, right? Especially if there's some moving pieces or you're unsure. Um, it's always good to kind of have a solid plan, right? You don't want to do anything mm-hmm. so rash. You don't want to just quit your job and transfer to a, this position or that position. If you do have upcoming financing, um, always consult with someone before you make any of those big moves because income is half of the equation, right? This is something mm-hmm. that will make or break the file. So it's better that you're a little bit more educated and more informed before you make any big decisions. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Until next episode, um, keep us uh, in mind. If you have any questions, the numbers are on our screen and we would look forward to your questions. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.